Uh, let's ask Tobin. We have to wait a couple of minutes for broadcast to catch up and stuff like that. Okay, thank you. Just tell us when. <laughs> Slough it off like Jason. Start. Okay, here we go. Welcome to your university, Montana State. I would also like to extend our welcome to our cyber audience as we are broadcasting this presentation and it will be available online. I would urge the cyber audience to continue watching after our speakers and ribbon cutting ceremony when we will play a video of the interior of the building and its niceties. I am Tom Stump, um, Associate Vice President for Auxiliary Services with oversight of housing, culinary, and event services. On behalf of our enterprise, we're excited to have you here with us. We are in the courtyard of Highlight Hall with the lawn sloping down to Mandeville Creek and beyond is Wally Byam Park with its fully mature trees. This site is bound to become the next iconic spot on a campus rich with sites that create and invoke memories. I'd like to recognize Vice President for Administration of Finance, Terry Least. Please wave your hand there, Terry, who tries to keep us under control, emphasis on tries. For those that have attended uh, my other grand openings, I usually speak first to set the tone of the theme, not today. Today, my pride is what I see in those that made this project a reality. As a leader of many on this campus, it gives me great pleasure to see our partners and staff bask in their own accomplishments. For our first speaker, Daryl Kerfman has decades of experience in the construction industry until coming to MSU as project manager about five years ago. His first project for auxiliaries was the completion of Yellowstone Hall. There is so much pride in Daryl's eyes when he gives a tour of this building. I marvel at his devotion to the project, and because of that, I've asked him to speak first. I believe he is a Chester native. Guilford, Guilford next door. An alum, Daryl Kerfman. Welcome, everyone. It's with great pleasure, a great deal of pleasure and pride that we welcome you to Highlight Hall today for our grand opening celebration. 
Today we are here to celebrate the crowning achievement of the completion of construction and commencement of operations of this magnificent building. And the opportunity to share this facility as home for our bright and eager young students. It is the culmination of years of effort and a prime example of how teamwork and the dedicated efforts of many accomplish great things. Looking back at this milestone accomplishment, we gathered on this site for a celebration of groundbreaking on September 6, 2018. And again for the topping out celebration signifying completion of the concrete structure on June 14th of 2019. At that time we set our focus on this day to arrive in just 13 months. Less a couple weeks to ensure a good showing of bobcat spirit. In September of 2019 when Highlight was named this brought a new level of focus, excitement, and unique character to the construction of this facility, as seen in the graphics display of the local highlight area on what we call the Lantern Wall. This hallmark feature is a backlit structure and extends all six stories. To display the many avenues of recreation and the beautiful waterfalls we are blessed to enjoy near our campus here at Montana State University. As a project manager for over eight years here at MSU, this new residence hall is literally a highlight. No pun. <laughs> and I extend many thanks to the entire consultant and construction team and our MSU partners for a job well done. We all appreciate all of your contributions. This beautiful facility will support the mission of the university and enhance the lives of Bobcat students at MSU far into the future. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Daryl. As we talk about building community with our students, the architectural and contractor groups must build a community that functions not only between themselves, but with professional staff such as structural, electrical, and mechanical engineers, and the trades of electricians, plumbers, carpenters, painters, concrete specialists, at the same time as you are hurting us, the owners and project managers. And I can speak from experience that we truly are a herd of cats. The next two gentlemen are exceptional at what I've just described, and they have embodied their souls into the culture of their successful organizations. And I was going to talk about Jason Davis, so let me talk about Jason Davis for a minute. As president of SMA, Butte native and alum, Jason Davis leads a remarkable team with offices in Helena and Bozeman. Their partnership with NAC and Dana Harbaugh another alum out of Spokane, have been very accommodating and productive for us with Yellowstone and now Highlight. Um, I was going to thank Jason, but Jason, true to form, has left it off onto Charlie. So we get to thank Charlie, Jake, and Kalen in bringing on the team of TDH, ACE, and DCI. The next person that is critical to this is Doug Jackson. With offices across Montana and the Inland Northwest, Jackson Contractor Group, and Pre Jackson Contractor Group's president and, and Helena native Doug Jackson has instilled a can-do spirit into his organization. With Gallatin Hall and the renovation of the Brick Breeden Field House, Jackson has served auxiliary services in extraordinary fashion. Doug, thank you for lending us Greg, Josh, Matt, Hunter, and Chance, along with Matt Singer. Williams and Wagner to do list just a few of the subcontractors. Charlie, you're going to be first. Doug followed up after Charlie. Thank you, Tom, for the wonderful welcome. Uh, let me find my, oh, that's the punch list from yesterday. Uh, <laughs> That's right, it is short, and, and that does speak to our great teamwork. 
Um, as a as an MSU alumni, uh, I'm incredibly proud and grateful to be a part of this team. Uh, it's been a long journey of, of close to four years uh, since we began working on this building. Um, and I'd just like to extend a thank you to, uh, to Tom and Auxiliary Services, to Jeff Bondi and, and James Tobin at Residence Life, uh, MSU Facilities, Daryl uh, and John Howe. Daryl, we couldn't have done it without you. Uh, President Cruzado for her amazing uh, leadership of this great institution. Um, we've had a lot of great consultants along the way, like Tom mentioned, uh, NAC Architects, uh, DCI with the Structural Engineering, ACE with the Mechanical, Electrical, and Plumbing, TDNH with all the Civil and Landscape, Kaufman Engineers uh, with Fire Protection, um, Kath Williams uh, with the LEAD, and the Jackson team uh, has been fantastic to work with, and I, and I thank you all. Um, I'd also like to thank my family who stuck with me through a lot of uh, late nights uh, working on this project. But what it's really about for us is uh, making the connections. And this building was really designed uh, to make connections through um, a number of different ways. Um, when, we, when we envisioned the building, it was a connection uh, between the resident, residential neighborhood of Bozeman and the campus here, we intentionally placed the building uh, towards the uh, edge of Bozeman to bridge that uh, connection and, and bring a residential feel. Um, we also wanted to connect uh, the students here with this incredible surroundings, uh, bringing nature into the building and connecting them with the park here uh, at Wally Byam which I think we've succeeded uh, as, a, as an extension with this backyard. Um, we also wanted to provide connections for the students who will live here through um, not only horizontal communities, but also vertical uh, connections between communities. And so you'll see that we, um, and, and this piece behind me right here is actually called the connector. Uh, it bridges both wings and it brings different communities together. Um, we've cut holes into it to bring uh, light and air as well as personal connections uh, between communities uh, to be able to happen organically in the building. Um, we've also tried to provide a variety of different spaces for people to connect, whether they are more introverted and would like a quieter, smaller space to connect with uh, a few people or potentially even themselves. Uh, or larger group settings where the students can gather to, uh, you know, cook a meal or have a study s session with, with, a, um, with a larger group. And so we've, we've tried really hard to, to help the community here at Highlight make those connections. And I think in light of our recent events with, with COVID, I think that this building will do a great job to allow those connections to continue to happen. And, and we, we couldn't be uh, more proud of, of this achievement. Um, I'd like to just uh, to say that, you know, the last thing is kind of connecting the, uh, the, the past uh, and with a bridge to the future. And we all are looking uh, at that future. And, and this building, um, I think, will allow us to all flourish. So it's a great day to be a Bobcat. And I'm extremely proud of uh, the accomplishment that this team has put together. Uh, so thank you all, and we hope that you all enjoy this building for years to come. Thank you. Hi, I'm Doug Jackson, President of Jackson Contractor Group. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank Mr. Stump for the seven minute warning that I was gonna speak. Um, and then following up three great speeches, which my crib notes have been taken up. So I'm going to do the best I can with what I have. Um, one, one group we really need to thank for everything that's been done is, is the craftsmen and craftswomen that worked on this. There are far beyond 300,000 hours of work that went in to create this beautiful structure. And it's incredibly important that we recognize them for their efforts. Um, they, we couldn't do this without them. Um, the, there was a litany of, of key subs that worked for us, all, many, many Montana-based subs, uh, Williams, Matzinger, Valley Glass, Cashman, Hill, and about 45 others. 
Um, and again, thank you for the opportunity to do this, uh, letting us do what we do. Um, without you folks, we don't get the opportunity to show what we show, and we could not be prouder of this. Um, thanks to the Jackson team for doing such a fabulous job on this and making us all look good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The first week I stepped foot on this campus over 20 years ago, I met an individual that had these harebrained ideas about constructing a building that ran on little or no energy. Kath Williams' unwavering devotion to sustainability in every facet of building construction and operation has inspired my decisions in auxiliary services with sustainability projects resulting in major contributions to reducing the MSU carbon footprint. With offices in Bozeman, Montana, London, England, and the Netherlands, she has been recognized internationally for her pioneering contributions to the sustainability movement worldwide. We are fortunate to ha enough to have her as our lead consultant targeting lead gold in this remarkable project. Allow me to introduce not only a great team member and colleague, but someone I hold out as a friend, Kath Williams. I'm not supposed to cry till the end. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. And it really is. I also thought I was going to be able to say I was the oldest bobcat here, but Don Mathry's here. So <laughs> I think he was here before me, but just barely. Um, LEAD is leadership in energy and environmental design. And MSU is a leader in LEAD. And the biggest thing I've learned over 20 some years of working as lead consultant worldwide is that it takes a team. There's, it's impossible for anybody to do it by themselves. And so this project had an amazing team right from the beginning and with Daryl's leadership and Wadad's support, it's, it's just been amazing. The two who have put up with me the most are Matt and Hunter. And I'm pretty sure every time they saw me coming in my hard hat from the parking lot, they either ran and hid or they locked the door. Or they moved the office a couple of times in here <laughs> and left me to, so I couldn't come get them. But we have lead gold pending on this. We were hoping because of the size of the structure that we'd be able to make silver. It wasn't really considered possible to make gold, but we were gonna try. This team was really gonna try. And we have gold pending now. We have to finish a couple of reports, but it's pending for lead gold. And this is version four. This will be the first one on campus and pretty close, I think, to be in the first one in Montana, in version four. And LEAD is a leadership document. They up the standards all the time, as they should, to make it a leadership document. And version four is the hardest. So I have to say thanks to the whole team. I'm real proud to have graduated from here and proud to have this building down the street from my house. Thanks. Thank you, Kath. Mike Vasquez, ASMSU student body president, is from Yorba Linda, California, and is going into his senior year in finance in the Jake Jabs College of Business and Entrepreneurship. He spent his previous two years in residence life, so he's a lifer. As a resident advisor in South Hedges and assistant resident director in Langford Hall, Mike and his vice president, Tal Rogers, campaigned on making MSU home for all of its students. Mike. Thanks for the introduction, Tom. Really appreciate it. Um, before I kind of start with the formal part of my speech, I wanted to acknowledge a few people here. Um, just, you know, this, this is an incredible accomplishment. 
But I think what really, like, what am I trying to say? There are wonderful, wonderful people in residence life. I come from a residence life background, and they've really helped, you know, build up my leadership, and they've really helped me. You know, they gave me the confidence to be able to run um, to be ASMSU president. So I wanted to thank a few people here. Uh, first, Jeff Bondi. Jeff, you're amazing. Thank you for always meeting with me, for always talking with me. Really appreciate you. Um, who else is here? Corinne, Corinne, you're great. Uh, Tovin, Tovin, you're amazing too. Thank you for, uh, I don't know, always being on my, on my, I shouldn't say that word. Thank you for always being on my butt and uh, pushing me to be better. Um, who else, who else? Katie, I don't know if Katie is here, but uh, you're gonna do a great job being the first RD of, uh, being the first RD of Highlight and then also being an AC at the same time. Um, He's not here, but Thomas Ferrari was my boss for two years, so wanted to say what's up to him. Uh, he was a big part in you know building up who I am, and I'm probably missing someone, but but you guys are all great. The people that make residence life are are really really great people, and highlight is in really good hands. And so now I'm going to get into the more the, the scripted part of my speech. Uh, three years ago, I nervously but excitedly walked into Yellowstone Hall, which would be which would become my home for the next year. That was a year of building friendships, creating experiences, and studying from time to time. <laughs> I truly believe that my experiences from Yellowstone are what set me up for a wonderful and successful next few years at Montana State. I have no doubt that Highlight Hall will do the same for many students to come. Yellowstone Hall was the newest residence hall, which opened in 2016. With the continued growth of our Bobcat family, the need to open another larger co-ed was a must. Co-ed Hall was a must, oops. When Tal and I ran for ASMSU office, our slogan was making MSU home for all students. Highlight Hall is going to, ju is going to do just that for so many because it'll be a home for generation of, generations of Bobcats. The building is designed on creating spaces that facilitate student interactions and building community. If someone is working on their chemistry homework, they are bound to find someone else that they can work with and potentially build a relationship with. Before I was voted in as ASMSU student body president, I was a resident advisor. I really loved my time as an RA because it showed me how much a little conversation can impact a student. I grew up in California, and when I first started at MSU, I was scared out of my mind because I didn't know anyone here. As an RA, I was the one helping make that first connection with students. I could connect students with resources when they were struggling, I could be a sounding board for students when they needed to vent, and I could celebrate with them when they aced a tough midterm. Being able to have this impact on others was important to me and important to the community we built together. Residence life is a truly remarkable place. Students are placed in a community that supports them both academically and socially. They are surrounded by people from around the United States and all over the world. Students have the opportunity to build study groups and hopefully create lifelong friendships with those in their building. In fact, like Tom mentioned, my time in residence life also connected me to my vice president, Tal Rogers, who is an RA with me in Langford. Not only does residence life cultivate meaningful relationships, they also develop and encourage students to become leaders in their own communities. Desk clerks, resident advisors, members of residence hall association, among others, are encouraged to, leave, to lead on campus, which gives them leadership experience they can use now and once they leave MSU. The time that a student spends in the residence hall is truly formative, and I believe one of the biggest parts of their college experience. Highlight Hall is truly remarkable. Throughout the building process, students were brought in every step of the way in the creation of this hall. They had the opportunity to talk with architects for the, for the building and give thoughts about the design. Student feedback is incredibly important because this building is for the students of Montana State. When Tal and I were campaigning for ASMSU and talking to students about what they wanted from the university, we found that students were very focused on sustainability. On that same line, one of the goals for Montana State and residence life was to minimize the building's footprint. They've done this so well that they're striving to be LEED Gold certified. And as a student, I'm grateful for the university's commitment to place sustainability first. And also as a student, I'm stoked for the outdoor basketball court over there. If, if you need to find me in the afternoons, I'll, I'll be right there. <laughs> um, 
Oh, where am I at? Where am I at? Residents Life and ASMSU want to listen to students and take their feedback and requests and turn them into actions. This year is no doubt going to be a challenging year, which calls for lots of creative thinking and collaboration to make MSU feel like home for all of our students. To be successful, we need to, re we need to rely on one another, support each other's missions, and be the best Bobcat community we can be in this unprecedented time. ASMSU is proud to be close partners with Residence Life. We have many of the same values, such as student leadership, fiscal responsibility, and making MSU home for students. One of our partners that is essential to leading students through connecting, engagement, and advocating for students is the Residence Hall Association, RHA as it's better known, is the voice of the students who reside in the residence halls. I would like to thank them for all they have done in the past and wish them luck as they move into the next academic year. Please know that ASMSU supports all you do on campus, and we look forward to the creativity and innovations that you bring forth in the coming year, not only through the pandemic, but in the, achieving, but in the achievement of opening a brand new hall. Highlight displays the collaboration of many within the university and the community to create a space and a home for students to succeed. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Resident Hall Association President Madison Lightfield is a third year student in the business management program from Lolo, Montana. I believe her father was going to give her a face mask from another school, but she was wise enough to wear bobcat colors. Uh, you're, you're quick learn, Madison. Madison is committed to making an impact on society that will make positive impact, a positive impact for everyone and create a world, a better world. So with that, Madison. My name is Madison Lightfield, and I'm the current president of the Residence Hall Association. This is my third year on campus, and my third year being involved with Hall Council and the Residence Hall Association. RHA is a student-led group that encourages advocacy, engagement, and involvement. As a third-time resident, campus living has been a huge part of my college experience, and I cannot imagine having it any other way. I've made many connections in my hall and in other residence halls as well. I'm excited to continue making these connections in the coming months despite our current circumstances. This year has taken a wild turn and we cannot move forward as if nothing is happening. The coronavirus has been affecting our nation and the whole world for the most of 2020 and it's natural to be frightened by that. It's natural to be concerned about yourself, friends, and family. World situation, school, work, and life can be stressful sometimes. But when you have an entire community rooting for you, it makes the world of difference. Highlight has your back, and so does the diverse community that we have here at MSU. Uh, we have students from all backgrounds coming together to form this Bobcat family, giving us a multiple perspectives to fight this together. We celebrate our differences here because that is what makes each and every one of us unique and it completes our Bobcat family. With the opening of Highlight Hall comes an opportunity, an opportunity to create a community, build the foundation for years to come, set the standards, create a family, make long lasting memories, and add to our Bobcat family. We have a blank canva canvas here and our residents have the opportunity to paint it. This is not just a building, this is a home a home to a group of 500 students this year and 500 the next. These students have the privilege to live in an inviting space that allows for connections between students, gatherings of friends, and the genuine feeling of being a college student. So when you hear about the residence hall highlight, it's not the building, it's the community that lives there. It's the life kept underneath its roof and, and those that want to grow in life and become the best they can are the kind of people that come to MSU. But the people that live here are not just students. They are essential pieces of our community. They are here to learn, develop, and better themselves. They will become teachers, engineers, artists, scientists, doctors, 
um, and so much more. They will become the missing piece of the puzzle that is the entire picture our society will become. They will go on to improve life as we know it, all starting from the community right here at Highlight Hall. So Highlight, welcome to Montana State University. Let your walls hold all that a Bobcat community truly is and become a home to students for years to come. Thank you for all for coming and can't wait for anyone, everyone to get a chance to see our new community facility. Thank you, Madison. Don Mathry has devoted his life to MSU, a renowned plant pathologist and faculty emeritus, involvement in Montana Egg Live, the Ma Master Gardener Program, and the Gallatin Gardening Club. I got to know Don from his involvement with Bobcat Athletics as part of the scorekeeping officials, but today his role <coughs> excuse me, is above all of that, for he is one of our neighbors in our new house. Please welcome Don Mathry. Thanks, Tom, for inviting me to come to this association today. Uh, it was 53 years ago, almost to the day, that my wife and I moved across the street. We live at 731 South 12th Avenue. We've lived in the same house now for 53 years, and so we've had this very close association with uh, the MSU. What kind of changes have we seen over the years? Well, when we first moved here, in the spot that we're basically occupying right now was married student housing, probably with barracks that go back to uh, World War II. Uh, not too many years after that, then uh, the Wally Byam Park uh, came into being, and we've certainly enjoyed having that park across the street from us. Uh, after that came uh, a parking lot that uh, served the university well until this building went up in, uh, well, just two years ago, basically. So have we seen some changes? Oh, you bet we have. One of the things that I was able to do was to look out my kitchen window at the Spanish Peaks and watch the storm clouds come over and kind of make a weather prediction. Can't do that anymore. This structure really, really blocks that view. But I found that my cell phone with storm radar is much better at predicting the weather than I ever was. So that's a change th that uh, we've seen. One of the things I appreciated that Tom invited me about a year or so ago to come over and tour the building when it was about half finished. And we got a chance to see how the architects and the contractor worked together. And it was an amazing experience. I never realized how complicated it was and to know that our MSU trained people were working and uh, guiding this project was a real pleasure. And so we appreciated that. Uh, now that the, the project is nearing completion, uh, we're going to look forward to how the students interact with our neighbors. Uh, we think it's gonna be a great experience and we're looking forward to it and uh, hope that they enjoy it as much as we have. So thanks again, Tom, and good luck with the project. Thank you, Don, for that wonderful historical perspective. And we'll be quiet, neighbors. <laughs> that was Don concerned when we had the public forum. So, um, When Jeff Bondi became MSU's chief housing officer, it really fulfilled his destiny. Beginning at a young age, he followed his parents as they sought to advance their educations at MSU by living on or visiting campus frequently. So when he came to college here, he thought it was natural to become a resident advisor, and he has progressed through the resident's life system to its apex. He instills the rural Montana work ethic and hospitality into the housing staffs. His positive outlook on life is contagious, and he injects excitement into everything he and his staff does. Jeff Bondi, you're up. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, Tom, and good afternoon. Thank you for being here. This is a very exciting day for us. Um, and, and really, I thought about, and I've, I've lost some sleep trying to come up with what I would say um, to express my appreciation for this moment and uh, how fortunate I feel to be a part of this team. 
and how much I've learned from all the professionals in this group. Uh, what a community we have at MSU, what a sense of family, and it feels like a family reunion often when we get together. Um, Mr. Maythry, thank you uh, for being here. It's an honor to have you here present with us, and we talk a lot about this being a gateway building. This building belongs to our, our past and our tradition and our history and our wisdom. It belongs to the students this year and the future of MSU. I think it represents where we've come and the people it took to get us here and where we're going. And uh, it really means a lot that you're here. Thank you. Uh, so I was a town kid from Montana. I got to tell you, I grew up in a big city of 400 people in Fort Peck. Uh, so, and there's a difference between a country kid and a town kid. Chancey can attest to this. But I'm going to quote his, uh, a quote that his cousin said, Ivan Doeg, when he was uh, interviewed by the Great Falls Tribune, they said, how did, growing up, how did growing up the way you did in Montana influence your writing? And he said, it comes from doing the chores the folks I had and the summer jobs I had living on the ranches and farms it really taught me very deeply that there are chores in your life you have to get up and do. And I've never had a great problem sitting down and doing that daily chore of producing so many words. Uh, I want to first start out by thanking the Residence Life Custodial and Operations staff who did some chores this summer to get us to this place. The Jackson and SMA and NAC crew for the work that you did to get this building open. It's truly impressive. MSU is uh, built on uh, that same Montana work ethic. I think it exists in other places. I know it exists in Puerto Rico. I think our president has done some chores along the way. Uh, but that Bobscat work ethic and resilience is very strong. And that's at the forefront of my mind as we prepare to welcome back our students. Uh, the other day I was with a group of housing professionals in a virtual meeting and we were coming up with our scenario plans and how are we going to approach the semester. And those plans changed weekly. And uh, it was very, uh, just nice type of timing. I stopped over to see, I think you or Trey, or they were delivering their furniture. I had a chance to walk through this building by myself. Greg, I had a hard hat and, and goggles on and my safety orange. And it was just nice to be in this building alone and quiet and just imagine the life that was going, it was going to take. And Charlie and Kaylin, how you guys put this together, I can't, this is built with a residence life perspective, but if a residence life person tried to build it, a lot of the switches wouldn't work, okay? <laughs> The way this building came together, it was almost like a dream. And your vision and, and work ethic and ownership, uh, I, I'm just amazed. But walking through it and seeing the living room spaces and the places where students from all over the world can come together through the common experience and then learn about uh, the differences that make us better. Uh, this building was built with inclusivity in mind and just the opportunity to get together and share this experience. I think one of the most iconic parts of our campus. Um, also, this fall, you know, we're not going to live in it just how we would, maybe in a different year, but we're going to get out and enjoy the park. We're going to spread out a bit. And, uh, and, and this building really gives me some, uh, really sense, a sense of optimism as we begin the year. This is a place where new traditions will be formed. I've already started promoting the highlight to highlight, walk, run, triathlon, or triathlon, whatever you call it. I'll meet everybody at South Hedges on the way back for the last leg. <laughs> uh, along with the excitement, there was a little bit of sadness. Again, because this building was built to have so much connectivity, we're going to do it a little differently. And uh, we're going to do it sensibly with the help of, of uh, our student leaders for a while. Prior to uh, naming Yellowstone Hall, we called it Hope Hall because we were over capacity and we hoped that it would be done on time. Okay? <laughs> this project was nicknamed A New Hope because we also needed the building to be completed on time. And as we opened this building, I think A New Hope was a, a nice nickname for it because this building gives us hope for this semester and the future. And uh, the, the, the students, as they come back and, and welcome, as we welcome others to the building, it's just, again, a, a fitting nickname. So we had some chores to do over the summer. All of us did. But the arrival of our student staff and today with our student leaders, again, provides that new hope. Last Thursday, I had the good fortune to spend some time with Abigail Ross. She's not here today, one of our assistant dire resident directors from Belgrade, Montana. I've been recruiting her to be an RA since she was about 10 years old. Her, her parents are community leaders. Her dad and I coached together. I was a lot better baseball coach. I hope he's watching this. Uh, but he was always out on the field doing the work that no one else had time to do, fixing things. So I knew she came from pretty good family. She had done some chores too. And I said, how are we doing, Abigail? She said, I'm excited. And we were talking through our mass. She goes, you know, I'd rather be here with my people, my community, and, uh, than, I than I would rather be at home. She goes, and, and there's just that positivity came, th came through every word she says. 
And, and she says, I'd rather, you know, if I have to do it from a distance and wear a mask, I'm okay with that. Later on in the day, uh, that same day, I got to say goodbye to a longtime student employee, Maury Bryan. While we said goodbye, like Michael, and it's very flattering, uh, but I will say, every time I think of people like you, I think of a quote from Troy Franklin, a friend that we know. He says, if you allow yourself to be inspired by young people in this profession, you're going to last a long time. So I seek to inspire, but I'm more inspired, and we're all in this together. And you guys shape this experience more than we do. You know, we're just trying to keep up, so thank you. Where was I at? Maury Bryan said, hey, this has had a tremendous impact on me. I appreciate what Residence Life has done. And it's like, Maury, you got to stop. You know, this is a shared experience, and I'm telling you, you've done more for us. And that's that tradition that started long ago that continues that is just so much at the forefront right now. We did a webinar or a WebEx uh, FaceTime Live with the Alumni Association, and we had RAs from 1972, people that lived in South Hedges that remembered their room numbers. They wanted to re relive their experience through uh, the opening of Highlight Hall. Jesse Bone is an RA in North Hedges, this, or Highlight this year. He's been in North Hedges uh, for the last two years. Jesse, what are you excited about? He says, well, once we get through the opening of Highlight, I have some ideas that would make North Hedges better. Okay, why are you telling me that? Because I feel like I want to give back. And again, when we get time, I want to share some things with you. Again, that ownership for this experience, that's what I'm trying to talk about when you guys shape it as much as we do. So thank you. Neighbors and citizen, our educational priority in residence life, and this was before we knew what COVID was, we set out to brainstorm, how can we enhance the mission and support the mission of MSU? How can we use this proximity to make this a better place? And community and proximity are two different things. We want to be intentional about this space and the leaders that we have and do something about it. We empower and encourage MSU students to develop respect and responsibility for themselves, and their community as neighbors and citizens. We want to teach neighboring. We want to teach what citizenship looks like through the good times and bad and how sometimes those common challenges can bring us together. So when this crew looks back 20 years from now, they're going to know something about and, and, and be able to talk about this experience. We want, and this works out to be wise as we talk about wisdom, our learning goals as we teach neighboring and citizenship is to promote a sense of well-being to promote inclusion, to promote stewardship and excellence. We don't want them just to be friends, but to be good neighbors, to look out for one another, to strive to do activities that enhance their lives, to get out and enjoy, to take advantage of all the resources that we have. Don't sit back as a good steward and, and rest on this opportunity. And so when they look back at MSU, they're going to expect the same from the class that's coming in. So if you were to get up on sixth floor, you would see how much we've grown in the last few years. Uh, I don't think it's uh, any coincidence since our president joined this. So from sixth floor, you're going to see the old iconic structures blended in with our new architecture. And uh, what I think you'll also see is, I always will say we're, we're not good because we're growing. We're growing because I think we have a lot of good things to offer here at MSU. But one thing that you can't always see and that you will feel, and I hope you feel today, is the strength and sense of community and family that has also taken place since uh, President Wadhead Crusado joined us. This is a great place to work. This is a great place to be. Through the good times and some of the challenging times, we're better from it. And uh, it is another great day to be a Bobcat. Thank you, everybody. And at this point, I would like to introduce your president and my president, uh, Wadhead Cruzado. No? Yes, that's right. I get, to I get to introduce you, too. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Thanks. Yeah. Well, the next speaker really needs no introduction. <laughs> but President Cruzado's commitment to the student experience goes unquestioned. Madam President, you have entrusted auxiliary services to provide the highest level of service to our student population. And the, um, sorry, and today's project lends confirmation to that said commitment and we on auxiliary services would like to say thank you <coughs> excuse me for your support and trust you have given us and without further ado president of our university Waded Crusado thank you so much Tom and thank you Jeff Ah, and thank you to everyone from our community who has taken the time to join us for this joyous occasion. First of all, I would like to say again, like 
Charlie Franklin said, and as Jeff said, uh, what a day to be a Bobcat. It's a wonderful day, a day of full of new beginnings. And I just wish so badly that I could give each and every one of you a hug. I hope you feel it. I hope you feel it, that we, we really mean it. As, as Jeff said, um, community has been the word that defined the project from the moment this building was first proposed. And I can still remember that day. Our community, that is, our wonderful students, our faculty, our staff, our alumni, our neighbors across the street have been foremost in our minds as we design and build this beautiful new freshman student residence. And certainly when we first envisioned this project, as we began the years of careful and creative work, we could not imagine that we would be opening Highlight Hall during one of the most complex periods in our lives. And yet, the opening of this stunning facility during this difficult time is a triumph, and it is a note of hope about our future. It is a remarkable achievement for all of our communities who were involved in its planning and building from its inception. It is a victory for the incoming class of 2024, go Cats, and for the generations of future Bobcats who will one day live and study in this building and then will go on to impact our state, our nation, and the world in important ways. We're making positive history today, and that feels so good, doesn't it? Um, Highlight Hall is a tangible symbol of MSU's optimism because we believe in the future and because we believe in the power of the land-grant university to shape the future. I think we can all agree that this beautiful residence hall radiates quality light, life, elegance, and energy. A project such as this only comes together as the result of the passion and the work and the excellence of a superb team. Thank you. To all the members of that team, the architects, the contractors, subcontractors, and suppliers, all the members of the building community who made this project possible. I should mention has been alluded to before, and I, will, I want to repeat it again, that many of the members of the firms that designed and built Highlight are Bobcats, and in many cases, the sons and daughters of Bobcats. This building is testament to the quality of education they received here and their loyalty to the blue and gold. I find the beautiful circularity that this house for Bobcats was made by Bobcats. You have heard already from representatives from several of those key suppliers. I would like to again thank SMA Architects of Bozeman and Helena, NAC, the architects specializing in housing from Spokane, and Jackson Contractor Group of Bozeman and Missoula. I would also thank, like to thank all of the MSU community that worked on this project, literally Hundreds of members of the Montana State community have touched this project in ways large and small. We thank each and every one of you for your work and dedication. Your contributions are reflected in the beauty of this building. And MSU is so fortunate to have each and every one of you on our team. And we thank you for your contributions to ensure that this building was finished on time and under budget. I love that. So this, this is all thanks to that man, uh, our wonderful project manager, Daryl Kerfman. I think he needs another round of applause. I would particularly like to thank Tom Stum, MSU's Associate Vice President for, of Auxiliary Services, under whose direction MSU has opened many stunning projects in recent years, and I have been so fortunate to witness, including 
Galton Hall, remember? Yellowstone Hall, Rendezvous Dining Pavilion, the two redesigns of Miller Dining, and now Highland Hall. You know, the Hayden Geological Survey Team, sent to explore and map the Yellowstone region in 1871 to 1872, viewed the valleys and mountains that rise to the south of where we sit today from the top of one of the peaks in the Gallatin Range. That team remarked about the special beauty of this area. And it was that group that noticed the presence of a gem, the highlight, which is a variety of opal. From their scientific observation came a name for the recreation we all love. That has been a nearly spiritual area for us all. This building, in essence, named for that gem. And Tom Stump, we should say that you too are a gem. A big one. <laughs> and thank you for your continued organization, passion, and stewardship of, auxil of auxiliary funds. Would you please help me in thanking Tom for his leadership? <laughs> thank you. Of course, I have to thank Dr. Don Mathry, our beloved professor emeritus of plant pathology, one of my most fervent bobcats for his time and thoughtful input on this project. We love you and your wife. Thank you so much, Don. I would also like to thank the Montana Board of Regents and Clayton Christian, our Commissioner of Higher Education, for their support and endorsement of the project, which has been deeply appreciated. And finally, I would like to thank everyone at MSU who has worked so hard to make MSU the University of Choice for the best students in Montana, as well as the University of Choice for fantastic students in a region, the nation, and the world. I'm always grateful for each of you, but perhaps never more than I have been in the last five months. Your dedication, your loyalty, and hard work is deeply appreciated. Thank you. We're so proud to open this beautiful and positive addition to MSU's history today. Congratulations to all for a job well done. And you know the routine. On the count of three, we all go in unison at the heart of our voices. Go, cats, go. Remember how we do that? Okay. Fits on air? Okay. So if at this moment, as we enjoy this beautiful building, we feel that blue and gold running through our veins, one, two, three, go, go cats, go. go. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy. Thank you, President Cruzado. Also, very kind words. Thank you. Well, I'd like to, some housekeeping here a little bit. Uh, to the setup team, James Tobin, Jamie Green, Kim Carlson, Janice Severson, Andrew Wagonblast, Jessica Thomas, Dana McGowan, and Sharde Erdahl, thank you. From the Communication Services Group, Kelly Gorham, Adrian Sanchez Gonzalez, Saul Mas Mast Andrea, for their photos and videography of the building. Jared Leonard and Jace, uh, Justin Lamy from Sports Facilities for the setup and breakdown today. Abby Wenger from Montana PBS. Uh, Jonathan Dubb from the sub, uh, from the Strand Union for AV support. Uh, the resident director, Katie DeVore and her residence life team, good luck um, this, uh, for this inaugural season of Highlight Hall. Thank you each and every one of you to our speakers. It was heartfelt, everyone. And thanks to our viewing audience. We wish to, you could have been here and personed and tour this facility. And just a reminder before I make some closing comments, a reminder to our virtual attendees to stay on the broadcast and we will play a 90 second uh, tour through the facilities. And just before we cut the ribbons, I got some final words. It's only two and a half minutes long. So, here we go. 
With Yellowstone in our rearview mirror, finding additional beds became our fear. Our plea was for added accommodation for our ever-expanding Bobcat Nation. Discussions of occupancy and finances became pointed, and through all the gauntlets, we were finally anointed. We turned our attention to design and planning and looked to the north for the campus to be spanning. If you've ever done business with SMA, it's everyday work becoming child's play. Started in the cold and arose from the ground, layer by layer, we were skyward bound. Month after month, with no reason to scoff, celebration on the roof for the topping off. Jackson cruising until impacted by the vid, where none of that was built into the bid. <laughs> and then when timelines began looking dire and dim, they reached down deep and pulled out their vim. Great consideration was given for a name, must click with students and carry the fame, until highlight peak in its valleys that wind fit perfectly in with mountains and mines. With completion nearing for time for a theme, idea after idea fell away from the scheme. I thought it was too much labor finding words that rhymed with neighbor, but residence life mission is to build community and to do that requires every piece of unity. It's everyone's responsibility, no matter how itty bitty, to exhibit respectability, diversity, integrity, and civility. We can never think anything less about safety and happiness or living up to trustworthiness on differing views with acceptance. These virtues listed, we can never shun. Because as bobcats, we are into, in this together as one. Our pledge for discussion will always flow. And to invigorate resolve, we holler. Go, <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Time to cut the ribbon. A gem and a poet. <laughs> Stand Everybody right stand up where they're at. So you're in the picture. Yeah. That is the conclusion of our broadcast. Please, everyone on that's online, we will now be giving a 90 second tour of the facility. Uh, and uh, so with that, we're done here. Daryl, Doug, Charlie, John, Cal, Madison. <laughs> Thank you everyone. chance you can send that poem? What's that? Can I get a copy of that poem? Sure. That would be fantastic. Okay. <laughs> that was impressive. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll send you an email. Oh, okay. oh no, I'll okay. you still have That's a fantastic. test from me that they could ever are. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to know. Well, it was a last minute rally, truly. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah, nice job, man. This is. Uh, Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. No, this is. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a it's a. Time to see. Time to see